any anyways, um, after that, so the file the folder will be moved to the application folder. Um, next thing you want to do is add a uh, registry key, which will um, basically add a start entry. And you can check your start entries by typing msconfig and start run, and go to startup. And basically, these show all your uh, startup entries. Right now, I have four listed. I have my Spybot, Webroot, and Logitech for my G15. And um, these are all the things that start up, the ones that are checked. So what this will do, this start key is going to add a registry value. So it'll be reg space add, and then you want to put this in quotation marks, the uh, path to the run directory. And to check the registry, you can just reg. Oh, shit. Okay. So anyways, let me just show you the path. This is your registry hive for your operating system. We're going to add it to the local machines. Let's move this down here. And from there, you're going to go to software. You don't need to actually do this step. I'm just showing you where it's located. It's nestled way deep in here. Your Microsoft. Yeah, let's roll all the way down. The Windows. And your current version. And you want to locate run. And basically everything in here are your startup entries. Anything listed in here will uh, start up whenever you log in. So it's kind of a hassle to locate this, but it can also be accessed through msconfig. And there's other uh, registry directories where they can be located for startup entries. So anyways, um, so when this file runs, it's going to add another registry key similar to that of Spy Sweeper. It's going to add uh, this type of registry um, entry. And what it's going to do is it's going to uh, launch the configuration setting ver uh, VBS script that we placed in the application data that was moved. So the syntax for this will be reg space add space the path in quotation marks slash v space ms updater or whatever you want to have it listed as in ms config space slash t space reg underscore sv which is the type space slash f space slash d space and then the uh, absolute path in quotation marks to that configuration settings. So whichever um, location had it moved to. Uh, let's see here. And uh, what this is going to do is every time they, s they log in, it's going to automatically execute that script. And also, let me go ahead and show this out. Uh, this is going to automatically update the registry instantly. Um, with the registry, generally what I use has to do is either restart or log off and log back in for the registry to update. This is going to do it instantly. So if they're in their computer right now and they execute this file, uh, let's see, the uh, configuration settings script will be executed, which will run the batch file in a shell so they can't see it, which will remove these executables, making their game unplayable. So, um, th it's it's kind of a, I don't know, it's a multi-approach script. Um, it, you have three sections, but they, they come from different angles. So if the user did manage to find out that there's something in their startup folder, they can delete it. That's fine. But they're still going to get this, uh, this, they have this registry item that's still constantly um, removing their executables. So let's say they're smart enough to ch check their msconfig but they don't know they have a startup folder. So they can remove it out of here, but every time they start up, that startup script is still going to be running, which is going to consequently make these uh, actually execute and just redo the cycle over and over again. And um, the idea is, assuming they've been aware of this going on, they're just going to eventually give up. So when all this happens, after all this is done, they, um, they probably won't notice until they log off and log back in or restart their computer. But they'll try to go to the uh, WoW or whatever. They'll launch it, and it won't launch. It'll just it'll give an error saying path not found or some shit like that. So they can do everything they can to try to fix it. But ultimately, what they're probably gonna have to do, and I, like I said, I have little knowledge about the installs of WoW. I just did a little research. But um, what's ultimately probably gonna have to do is reinstall WoW, which um is a really long process. I remember doing it once, and it took me over eight hours to do all the updates and shit. So that alone is gonna be a huge hassle. So finally, they're going to have to re reinstall WoW, and most likely it's going to ask them to reboot. So when they reboot, they're going to log back in, and once again, the WoW.exe and Repair.exe are going to be deleted, and they won't be able to play. And they're going to be forced to reinstall, reinstall, until eventually they're just going to give up. Even if they go into safe mode, they're still not going to have any luck, because I don't even think they can install it and run the updates in safe mode. So ultimately, they're going to get fucked over, and uh, it's just three simple scripts you can make just in Notepad to uh, end the user's WoW career. Um, 
Let me go ahead and show you all how we can uh, run this into an ex uh, executable. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, to run it, to create an executable of this, we want to uh, get these two files or the folder, the two files, and this script, and we're going to want to uh, zip it up. So we're going to add it to an archive. Make sure it's a zip file, best compression name, whatever you want, and then create a zip right there. After that's done, you want to open up a zip2secure.exe if you don't have it downloaded. I'll go ahead and post a download link in the side of the video. I'll put a link in there, so check that. There will be a free download, it's a free application, and what you'll do is launch it. Once you install it, you'll launch it. And uh, it's going to ask me, let me go ahead and zip this really quick just for demonstration. <clears throat> so you have that, and you want to locate that. Actually, it's on my desktop. Where the fuck is it? Oh, it's in my install directory. So open that, and then um, it's going to ask, run this program after unzipping. So when they execute it, this program is going to launch, and what program we're going to choose is the setup.vbs. So that will basically initiate the whole cycle for us. And um, you're going to choose a hard code hard-coded unzipped directory. Basically whenever they run executable this is where everything's going to extract into. And of course for that we're going to choose their startup folder. Put it in there as well. Icon file, um, you can make it look legit, more legit by uh, locating an icon file. Uh, they're spread all throughout your program files. The one I chose was DivX and I chose this one I think. It's the ICO file. And output, you want to name it whatever. I chose mine as active webcam because I know this is something he's wanted. Dot exe. Make sure you have that dot exe, or I'll just save as a file without an extension. It won't work. And after that, you just hit create. So once that file um, completes, what it's going to do is create an execute executable, and then you just give them that executable, and um, have them launch it, and they should be good. Um, well, they shouldn't be good. They should be bad, but they'll be good afterwards because they're not playing WoW anymore, and they should be uh, healed from the vile disease that is WoW. And yeah, that's it. Simplistic and good.